one of the periodic table is a group of reactive metals. Lithium, sodium and potassium are at the top. These metals are so reactive they have to be stored under oil and need to be handled with care. Lithium is so soft it can be cut with a knife. You can see how shiny the freshly cut surface is. But leave it exposed to the air for a few seconds and it quickly begins to tarnish. It's reacting with the air. This is sodium. It's even easier to cut and again the shiny surface soon discolours. Potassium is even softer and reacts so quickly it touches immediately. Another way of comparing reactivity is to place the metals in water. Lithium floats. It reacts immediately, fizzing and skating around on the water, which is evidence that a gas is being produced. By carefully putting a tiny amount into a boiling tube, the gas can be tested with a lit splint. A squeaky pop means it's hydrogen. Universal indicator shows that at the end of the reaction, the solution is alkaline. Lithium reacts with water to form lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. So how does sodium react? Again, it floats on the water and fizzes. The gas produced is hydrogen. And the solution is alkaline. When sodium reacts with water, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen are formed. Sodium is more reactive than lithium. It's below lithium in the periodic table. Potassium is below sodium. So how would you expect potassium to behave? Potassium is definitely more reactive than sodium and lithium. It reacts immediately and the hydrogen produced ignites on its own. Universal indicator goes blue. Potassium reacts with water to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. Rubidium and cesium are elements which lie below potassium in the periodic table. How would you expect rubidium and cesium to react with water? We've already looked at the history of the periodic table and how it got to be as it is today. We looked at the modern version of the periodic table and what we're going to do now is we're going to start looking at specific features of a couple of different groups. The ones we're going to look at are group 1 and group 7 and the transition elements as well. But for this video we're looking at group 1 and some of the features of this group of elements. Now it's actually unfortunately just a lot of memory work but the key things that you have to know about group one is that they are all uh, low density in fact the first three lithium sodium and potassium all actually float on water because they are less dense than water um, they react with non-metals to form ionic compounds uh, we've looked at this before in previous videos but all of these metals will produce an ion that has a plus one charge so lithium will produce an ion that has a plus one charge and sodium and so on and so forth and they can react with other non-metals to form ionic compounds um, something we've looked at in detail before they react with water to release hydrogen and that hydrogen sometimes can catch fire uh, if the metal is reactive enough the next thing is that they form hydroxides 
so lithium will form lithium hydroxide that will dissolve in water to give an alkaline solution so if you actually drop some lithium in some water and test the water by adding a pH indicator or universal indicator you'll see that it's an alkaline solution um, the next thing is that further down the group you go the more reactive the element and the lower the melting and boiling point now this is quite an interesting thing to look at the fact that they are more reactive you may have actually seen these uh, demonstrated in class and if you look if we put some lithium in water first thing you notice is that it floats because it's got a low density uh, but you might also see it uh, fizzing around and actually uh, moving around the surface of the water as it fizzes and slowly reacts with the water now we said the more reactive uh, the further down you go the more reactive so if we look at the next element sodium you'll actually find it's got a slightly more uh, violent or vigorous reaction this actually can catch fire it actually produces a bit of a purple flame and again that uh, zips around and moves around the surface of the water with its uh, flame there the next one down the further down you go again you see a much more violent reaction you actually see bits maybe flying off and sparkling and crack uh, cackling and crackling as you put it in the water um, and really beyond potassium you can't really demonstrate that um, in the classroom because the reactions for rubidium and cesium are much too violent they are actually explosive and francium over here is so reactive and violent it's actually a radioactive uh, element as well there is no way anyone's going to be able to get their hands on this legally to demonstrate that now just to have a look at these two in fact rubidium and cesium I've put a link in the uh, description of the video to a brainiac video that actually shows um, uh, rubidium and cesium being put in a bathtub and you can actually see how explosive these elements are so just click on that uh, link to see those two reactions it's quite a lot of fun to watch those um, but other than that just remember these are the key features of the group one metals one thing I forgot to mention is that they are the called the alkali metals and hopefully you haven't already shot off to watch those explosion, explosions before you remember this last little point.